And with that, we're going to go to our first project, and that is the Wayfinding Project. So, Matthew, I believe you are here, and uh, you will kick us off with the Staten Island Wayfinding Project. All right, yeah, I'm here. Uh, I would just like to take a couple seconds to ready my presentation, and then I can start. <clears throat> Uh, sorry about this. Uh, can everybody see? And can everybody hear me? Yes. All right, thank you. So uh, this is the Downtown Staten Island Wayfinding Signage Project by Matthew Zuchenyuk and assisted by Briani Estevez and Mark Joseph. Here's a little bit of a introduction and what this project is about. Uh, we will cover what is the Wayfinding and Signage Project, what are its objectives, what were the inspirations, what can be done, and what are the next steps. So in short, the Downtown Wayfinding and Signage Project was created in order to help visitors traverse the area of Downtown Staten Island. There are currently few navigational aids in the area and many get lost in the chaos of lights and people when beginning their adventure through the downtown area. Here's a site analysis and here we have listed the problems, which include ferry terminal, is uninviting and does not support traveler visitation. And there's minimal to no wayfinding at the terminal or the surrounding area, which makes it very easy for people to get lost. Effects of the problem. Travelers feel drawn away from the area because of the lacking in wayfinding. And less travelers means less activity in the surrounding neighborhoods, which also affects the economy. The current experience. Understanding the community's frustrations with the current situation was vital for knowing how we could effectively fix the issue. So experiencing the frustrations for myself was necessary to get closer to this goal. The adventure starts right after the departure from the ferry. When you step off the boat, you are greeted with a long hallway with minimal directions. Let me find this. Here you can see pictures of the long hallway and the ferry terminal. This is where you would usually get off and start your adventure in Staten Island. One way to exit is towards the right of the hallway where you are greeted with a beautiful view of the water. You might not know it, but this is the start of the North Shore Waterfront Esplanade Park and the entrance to Empire Outlets. Here's a view of the terminal from the Esplanade and on the map you can see the exact location. On the left, in the long hallway, there are many exits with hard to see signage and limited maps to see possible areas or points of interest. If you choose to take a left in the hallway, you will be staged on a massive concrete promenade built for buses and cars to pick up arrivers. This promenade closely mimics the look and feel of an airport terminal. And on the right is a different view of the concrete structure that overlooks the water on the right side of the hallway. Here's a different angle of the promenade. It shows the long and blank platform on which new travelers must decide what to do next in order to get further into the city. On the right, you can see the main street on which the promenade exits to. This is Bay Street, the main street that connects St. George and Stapleton, as well as providing direct access to Victory Boulevard, which connects St. George to Tompkinsville. And here's another angle to see Bay Street. This angle faces the promenade and shows the confusing street and limited signage. So what can we do? Well, for one, we can increase the number of signs in the area to keep people on a straight, consistent path. 
make signs more visible and easy to understand for pedestrians is second nature and create a cohesive theme for the downtown area, taking advantage of their logo and the brand already present. Here are the tasks. Modify ferry terminal signage to make signs easier to see and read for visitors. Modify ferry terminal promenade markers to make signs easier to see and read for visitors. Modify Stan Island Railway Station signage to make sure visitors can see where the SIR is located and help guide them. Create branded district-wide signage. Make blade style signage that helps pe guide people. Promote downtown branding by making downtown Staten Island feel like its own using branding themes. And increase competitiveness by creating a bigger Workers, but in court. <laughs> we'll give them 30 more seconds. And then what we might do is pause. He just logged off. He might got kicked off. Okay. All right. All right. Great. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause here for a minute. Um, the other people on his team, are you able to take oh. over for him? I am very sorry. I am here. <laughs> my yes, internet has... back. Oh, yes, I am back. Again. All my, right. Great. My... Yeah, I'm sorry. My internet has been doing this all day today, and I, I, I was hoping this wouldn't happen during the presentation, but as luck would have it, you know, Matthew, it is what it is. COVID. It's COVID. You just keep doing your thing, okay? <laughs> Got it. I'll continue the presentation from where I left off. Great. Uh, yes. Let me just share. And if you have any more problems, I'll do a little... Oh, wait, did I? Oh, I think I skipped. Oh, no. Uh, uh, dang it. All right. Uh, I'll just continue. Throughout my president's study, I wanted to look for projects and designs that reflected my project, but also allowed me to think outside the box and come up with ideas that would help me create an impactful brand. Here, I took inspiration from the uh, website that I found, which was downtownsi.com. And I really liked the already existing brand that was there. And I thought including this in the signage would be an effective way to create a stylized and personal brand for Staten Island. Because why fix something when it's already good? You know what I mean? So the elements here that I found were bold, bright, simple, compact, and easy to look at, which are key features of good signage. And my thinking was by incorporating the style and feel of the current brand into blade signs and related signage, we can support local businesses and lead visitors to discover new places while keeping a consistent and fluid brand through the towns. Here are some businesses and locations that we thought would be good for blade signage and other forms of signage. 
And the reason that we picked these was we chose these locations for many reasons as a planned tactic to help improve the local economy. We chose these locations to help represent um, we chose these locations to help represent the wide variety of cultures present in Staten Island and help express the presence of them throughout the different businesses. We also chose these locations to help support the Staten Island's local economy on a broad spectrum and to create a trail of locations to act as breadcrumbs. This was actually the idea that sparked the initial plan of the project and how we would tackle it. Here is the first case study that I found online while searching for inspiration. This group called Monitors did a signage project for the Merck Group Outdoor Wayfind or Merck Group um, uh, company, which was uh, outdoor wayfinding. This inspired me to create a common shape and style to reflect the project and the brand. The design and content of the signage are consistent with the Merck brand principles. On the bottom, you can see how different colors and shapes affect the different styles and what the exact signs are used for. So the blue would be used for information, the green would be used for direction, and yellow would be used for identification. On the top right, you can see how these signs would look in the real world and how they are currently being used. Personally, I really liked this. Another inspiration, a piece of inspiration that I found was from the same group that did wayf a wayfinding and orientation system for the Karlsruhe Köln city in Germany. This project, I like this project because it uses color coding just like Monitor's previous project. It is, sim it is a simple design that is informational while seamlessly blending in with the surrounding architecture of the area. So, in all, the reason I chose this was because, one, it's an effective way to get people around, but two, it doesn't take away from the natural architecture of the area. Like, it's not an eyesore. It just helps people get around better without actually uh, taking away from the experience that you would get while walking around. And on the bottom, you can see the different ways that they use signage to help get people around, such as kiosks, late signs and posters. Here, I thought of using the colors from the website and the existing brand to help improve our, pers our project and the signage that we would make. The use of existing colors already present for the different areas of downtown Staten Island would be, a, I thought, a great addition to the signage and taking advantage of those colors and using them in the branding would create a sense of harmony and understanding. So for example, you would have blue for St. George, yellow for Tompkinsville, and green for Stapleton. And the, uncut, the overall color would be orange on the bottom, which I thought was a great idea. And here are some renders and sketches of the initial designs of the wayfinding signs. So you can see the different shapes and the different designs that Briani and Mark came up with. And we chose to do this simple icon, this um, uh, tilted square, because we thought it would, be a, uh, it would be a simple shape, something easy to look at, and a great way to carry information, but also to use it as almost an icon when talking with Briani, she said that she took heavy inspiration from uh, video game icons, which was uh, a brilliant idea for me. And just using a simple tilted square would be a great way to indicate which businesses were part of the project and to use them as breadcrumbs throughout the area. So not only would people be able to easily identify the businesses, but also know that, well, since this is a, uh, one of the businesses that we chose for the signage, there might be other good businesses around the area which would increase the spending for tourists and help the local economy. 
that's it for now. And thank you very much for listening. Awesome. Fabulous job. All right. So now we have a couple of minutes for questions and comments. Does anybody have any questions or comments for the wayfinding team? Hi, this is Janet from the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce. And I really just want to take a moment to thank uh, everyone involved with this. This was the project that uh, the team, you know, the, the students worked with on for us. And I couldn't be happier with the outcome. Um, really wonderful work, Matthew and all of the team, fantastic. You really took every, absorbed everything that we discussed and everything that was hoped for and, and you know, distilled it into a really fine project. Um, I, thank you, Heather. Thank you, Colleen, for getting us involved and everyone over at the Borough, at Borough Hall and also all the teachers. I can't thank you all enough. Um, and just one final thing I wanted to uh, say is that I, the, um, the last item that you showed, which was the, uh, the t rendering of a potential sign, I absolutely love the tilted square at the top because actually that is the the downtown Staten Island logo. Yeah. So beautiful, great creative idea. And our last thing I'm going to share, um, we just in the last week or two uh, learned we had we would had hoped that this project would actually come to fruition in, in reality. Like in other words, we would be able to move forward with a wayfinding signage project. And it was announced by the state, New York State, uh, in the last couple of weeks uh, through, that through the downtown revitalization initiative, we ha are going to be funded to actually do this Wayne finding project. So uh, stay tuned, uh, students. I'm sure you'll see some elements of what you've presented incorporated in what the what comes out of that, and we'll keep you uh, in the loop on all of that. And I hope you'll find it as uh, you know as rewarding as I know we found what you did. So thanks so much, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, I, I just want to say this was an excellent presentation. You better be careful. The city of New York's going to hire you. That was so clear <laughs> and inventive. We're not used to this, right, Jennifer and Colleen? That was really, really well done. So I'll make my question quick, but just feel really good about what you did. And as Janet said, this has real life, real time applications because it's being discussed now and it's so important. Um, what's the, what do you think about the use of QR codes and other use of signage to get people to tap into more information on an iPhone? You know what? This was actually, it's so funny that you mentioned this because we were actually discussing this exact idea with my teacher on Friday and we are having plans to introduce that into the signage as well. There are plans for that. Well, I'll, I'll add one more thing then quickly. We are actually getting ready to launch this month a uh, QR code app and interactive map on the downtown SI.NYC website. So I would love to, see if you have any thoughts you want to share on that, it's going to happen. And, uh, if, you know, we'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. I'll, I'll keep yeah. you guys posted. <laughs> that's, um, that's actually perfect. That's amazing. And um, just one comment to what you said about the tilted squares and the design. Like I said previously in my presentation, there was, um, I felt like there was no need to change anything since the original brand was, um, in my opinion, really great already. So, you know, you know why fix something when it's already great? Um, it just incorporating that and helping to express that uh, we thought would be the best option going forward. Awesome. Great. Great job. <laughs>